Good morning and welcome once again. The reason for these daily services is to help us day by day draw near to the Lord Jesus. So here again, these no doubt familiar words which he says to us. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, help each one of us to draw near to you now, to learn from you as we listen to your word. Thank you for your kindness and gentleness towards us and for your promise of rest. May our souls indeed know that rest afresh as we come to you now. Amen. This week, we're going to be looking at one of the pivotal moments in the Bible story. It's one of the most important chapters in the Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 7. It uh, tells of a time in the life of David, after he'd become king, there'd been a few years of civil war, but the nation was now united under his rule. He's uh, conquered Jerusalem and made it his new capital city. And he's brought the Ark of the Covenant there, symbolising God's rule over them, his gracious promises to them. And we're told that now David, who for years had been living on the run, was settled in a palace of his own. God had given him rest from his enemies. And yet something troubled him. Something didn't feel right. He says to Nathan, the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God remains in a tent. Doesn't feel right. He wants to do something about it, to build a proper house for the Lord, a temple. And Nathan the prophet initially says, well, sounds a great idea. Go for it. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan. And let me read now from verse 5 of 2 Samuel 7, where God says, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I've been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tending the flock, and appointed you ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone, and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people shall not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning and have done ever since I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. Essentially, God says to David, you're not the one to do this, and now is not the time. Now is not the time because God's work is not yet finished. A tent is a temporary home. My camping days, I think, are now in the past, thankfully, though I, I have happy memories of camping holidays with the kids when they were little but to be honest a few days is all I could cope with and then I wanted a proper bed and a proper house and it seems even in David's day when of course people sometimes lived in tents nevertheless a tent 
suggested a temporary home. Building a house meant you were settled, you'd arrived, this was it. Now that moment had come for David. He was now living in a palace in Jerusalem. But that moment had not yet arrived for God. It wasn't yet the time for God to settle down because his work was not yet done. So God says, I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I've been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I've moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, why have you not built me a house of cedar? A tent, God says, has been a perfectly appropriate place for him to dwell because he's been on the move. He's had stuff to do and he's not yet finished. There's more he's going to do for David. God says, now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And there's more he's going to do for his people. Again, he says, I will provide a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people shall not oppress them anymore. He's going to give them rest. And then and only then will it be time for God, as it were, to rest, to settle down and dwell in a permanent house. We get a little foreshadowing of that under Solomon. But that is only a model, a temple that Solomon builds. It soon becomes clear that God's plan is not yet fulfilled. It's in the coming of Jesus that at last we see the one whose name is greater than every other name. And Jesus says to his people, I can give you now rest. So now God says, I'm ready to settle down in a house built with stones, but amazingly built with living stones. For we are the house God is building to dwell in eternally. We're still a bit of a building site, a work in progress, but one day it will be finished and then God will settle down and we will share in his rest eternally. Let's turn now to prayer. Let me pray. Thank you, Father, for your great plan of salvation fulfilled in Christ. Thank you for the rest that we already know in him and that even now you have made your home in us individually and corporately. But how we long for the day when you will bring perfect rest to all creation, when there'll be no more groaning, and we will enjoy your presence and blessing forever. Thank you that that day is coming. Amen. The collect for this week is an appropriate one, so let's pray this together. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all. Govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations, divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin, to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our song now speaks of the promised shepherd, great David's greater son, under whose gentle rule we live today, whose goodness will never fail. <laughs>
Let me close with a prayer of Paul's. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.